Someone is asking in the chat, what the hell is an expedition? It's true that I haven't even talked about it during the introduction. It might be really cool to talk about season one. What was it? So season one was a, a congregation of multiple dungeons for two months with a dungeon that was released every two, three days. And we had some dungeons that existed, but they were but we've added mechanics on top of the existing mechanics. We've picked up uh, level 160 and above. And every time uh, the idea was to win the dungeon with the new mechanics to get these expeditons, these, and then use them to collect them and then buy rewards with them, like cosmetics and stuff like that. While we could also buy a medal in the shop that unlocked new cosmetics. And then you could buy stuff from uh, Toka Gecko. So there's a P NPC, a paid version and a free version. It was a timely event for two months where you had to successfully do the two dungeons. And after those two months, the dungeons were deactivated. So now we're going for a season two because season one, it was, it was a big success. And I know that you guys have missed this dungeon so we could... Uh, You've beat these dungeons in the past multiple times. So, we had one question. How do we bring back interest to existing dungeons? And then we thought, well, how about marrying expeditions with the existing dungeons? So, we've named it Origins. What is it? This, what is this season two? What are its particularities and why is it called Origins? In brief, what will they have to do, the players? Origins because we're going back to the origins of Dofus. We will go and hit dungeons that exist since very long to celebrate the 20 years. So for the 20 years of Dofus, we've looked for 20 first dungeons the f of the first 30 that we opened. And we've told ourselves we adapt them to level 200. And then we've recreated some new mechanics because most of them are rather simple. Like Tofu, for example. The mechanic is so simple. So we've tried to adapt it as a result so it's a derivative of what exists but the mechanics are a bit different knowing very well that there's not only the boss the family as well will have its mechanics adjusted so compared to season one we had loads of modifications in the game so as we need to specify for the first season we had the idols as part of the functioning of the expedition but now we don't have any idols anymore and on the season one, we had two versions. So you had to do the same dungeon twice using the bravery and all the uh, all that, so whatever it's called. So it was a bit repetitive having to do the same dungeon twice with different titles. So we've taken your uh, feedback on board and we've decided to propose this list of 20 dungeons. I can only see the question asked. Um, our postulate is the same for this expedition as it was for the previous one. It is for high level people. It is a type of content that we're adding for people who have already done a lot of content and have uh, reached a certain level. Uh, we uh, we decided not to add any new content for people who all still rediscover or discover in the game from scratch because they already have plenty of stuff to go through. So we've thought of high level people because they have covered pretty much everything. So for the level I've put 180 plus, that's because it will be for uh, people who are 180 and above. It will be open for 160 and above, but it is balanced with 180 and above for my, in mind. So our objectives was to focus on this tranche of high level players. So what are the novelties of this season two? What have we adjusted at the end? So the first one, uh, difficult mode. What does it mean? Uh, because the dungeons are adjusted for level 200, naturally they will become more difficult. And the other thing is that the family as well of monsters will have to be adjusted as well. So because we don't have idols, we had to rework the entire dungeons, including the family of mobs next to it. So the dungeon function will be two rooms. One, where you discover the new mechanics and how the mobs look like, and then the boss mob, where you have to validate the achievement and recuperate your expedo tokens or whatever they call. 
So in season one, we've modified the mechanic of the boss only. Here, we are changing the functioning of the boss and the entire family. And the idea as well was to keep the general idea of what the boss is and what it does, but make it level 200 with the difficulty that comes with it. Here in essence, there's a little addition on the existing mechanic uh, in, the, in the first uh, edition because we were just testing. Here we have duplicated it and changed the entire mechanic and things to that. So like we've created an entirely new dungeon with a new layer of difficulty. Right, and then next, you have already burnt the next, slot, uh, the next uh, slide. So as you've said already, there will be an alternative dungeon uh, because it's a completely different thing. Once the events start, there will be an NPC that will let you get into the dungeon of the expedition. So there will be two kind of dungeons. It will require a key as well. And it will function entirely different. The normal one will not function. Uh, knowing that we will have to have a save on the classical dungeon and the new dungeon. There will no longer be a necessity to speak to this NPC that was in uh, Ashrub that we remind you used to give us idols. It's no longer the case. He will still be there, but only to explain. No idols, no nothing. Once the dungeon is activated in the expedition mode, all you will have to do is go to the NPC outside of the dungeon and there will be some extra lines of dialogue to join this alternative uh, new dungeon. And as we said, the monsters themselves, the mobs, they will be completely new. Uh, if there's a quest that lets you, that asks you to go and do some tofus, um, it will not validate if you go and hit normal tofus, you'll need a special one. And you won't be able to sold them and capture them for later. <laughs> yeah. So w there will be an entire new ecosystem that is dedicated to the expeditions. We have an example. I've seen some questions in the chat about this. Uh, let's look at an example of the soft oak that we should say one of the really complicated bosses. So, will it be complicated really? Not necessarily. So out of the entire bosses that we've had, there will be variable difficulties. We won't tell you this, we'll let you ex uh, discover and find out. Uh, it's really hard to balance these things and necessarily there will be differences. Here for example the soft oak. We, his branches will become invulnerable while he's still alive. And we've changed the manner in which he summons the, uh, the arms, the branches, because there's no longer gonna be a case where the summoning branch summons the summoning branch ad, ad nauseum. So if the fight lasts very long, there will be a lot of summons. And if you can manage, it should be all right. I can see the question. Uh, might as well answer it right now. The bunch of keys. So the dungeons that will be asked are old dungeons. So normally low level. Like Royal Gobble, uh, Boar Cat, uh, White Rat, Black Rat. I think the highest one will be Soft Oak, maybe. I think it's very likely to be sh to, uh, Soft Oak, the highest one. But it will be dungeons where the keys and uh, the mats are relatively uh, cheap, so it will be accessible to everyone. So you should worry about that because they're so low level. It's okay. So this is an example. Let's not get into the presentation of every dungeon. Our objective today, just like season one, is to let you discover. You start your expeditions, and then, and then you will figure out, find out, discover the mechanics as you go along. Knowing very well that there will be 20 and we've only presented you with one right now. Right. That was for the functioning. What is there to win? I'm, I'm hearing people talk about uh, the keys going up in price. Well, that's normal. It's part of the game. When there's an event, there's momentary fluctuations in price of things. And it is how it is, so we're not going to intervene there. So, for the rewards, there will be three cosmetic sets to win. First of all, there will be expeditions to win, obviously. <laughs> We've already said that. Okay. So there will be uh, cosmetic rewards and gameplay rewards. For the season one, we had... Uh, gameplay rewards of uh, a, a type shiket, I don't know what that is. So these are uh, XP, PP, consumables. Everything that is gameplay will be free. There will be not, no pay to win. But everything that is cosmetic stuff, the only paid t 
tier will be cosmetics. So there's an entire bit that will be cosmetics for free. And it is the main uh, set that you will be able to get just like last time. And then, uh, so a free cosmetic set, candies of all types. And then there will be a cosmetic stuff that will be behind paywall. That's it, that's right. So, for the rewards, what is there to win? For the most curious of you, you will have already uh, seen the, the uh, yeah. So, in the game, they've added some rewards that people were able to see them in the sort of, I don't know, uh, logs or files. So, the first one is um, the black warrior or knight. There's two of them. There's a black and a white one. A livy object, so it adapts to the colors of your characters. So there'll be shield, uh, hat, pets mount, cape and hat, of course. And the hat, there's two options, the open one and the closed one. This one is to pick up on the first bit of the paid version, so the one at the bottom. There will be two tiers, free and paid at the bottom. And the second one is the uh, miserable executor, uh, which uh, comes with a pet, shield, hat, and uh, shoulder pads. Which is the second part of the paid version, and the last one is the tranquilo, the silver tranquilo. And this is the free one, this is the free one. This one will be able to be collected during the entire uh, event with the pet's mount, which is the last possible uh, reward to grab. So it ends on the pet's mount. A little slide, there's a lot of uh, rewards. So here's a summary. So the free tier is the one at the top. And the paid version. Twitch chat. So, in the shop, you'll be able to buy a uh, an amulet, the one that you see at the bottom, uh, which will be paid with real money. And so there'll be three packs, one with the, the amulet. Right, okay. So there's like three tiers of um, that amulet. There's three badges you can buy, essentially, for different tiers, depending on what you want. The third one comes with GPS potions and stuff like that. So if you have advanced and then decided to buy it later on, it's retroactive. You will be able to go back and uh, get everything that you have already unlocked. So if you are sure that you've finished everything, then you can decide if you want to buy the pack and then retrospectively get everything. No, you don't have. It's free, Benedetto. So... Uh, the Toka Gecko. Okay, so the paid one will be linked for three for six months, and the other ones will be linked to the account of free ones. And this is the perfect transition to talk about the season um, rewards. So we've talked earlier about the Toka Gecko. What what happens to it? This set essentially. So last year we had this set called the Toka Gecko set, which. Uh, was able to be gotten with badges. So the badges you would be able to get during the event and if you buy the paid version of the medal. And in essence, you could use those little tokens to buy the cosmetics, knowing very well that you never manage to get uh, the entire set with just one event, so you have to accumulate them. So the NPC is back, he's still there, same quantity, same everything, and you'll be able to finish the Toka Gecko just like last year, knowing very well that we've added the two new sets from last year that were paid, they'll be added to the shop as well. But the free one remains exclusive. So you'll be able to buy them using the tokens with the previous and the current year's um, rewards, the token. If you've missed the last year event or something, you'll be able to buy it now. Knowing very well that the tokens and the badges of the expeditions for Season 1 were... You were able to get them in the event, but it was... Right, so it was divided between the paid and... Um, the, yeah, so it was divided between the two, the paid and the free version, but now it will all be in the free version. So knowing if you've missed it from last year, you'll be able to complete the set now 
whichever one you've missed you'll be able to complete it r right now to complete it using the tokens you will get from this expedition and there will not be enough badges to buy the entire sets from the entire sets uh, from the NPC. The idea is for you to participate in multiple ones in order to complete your sets over time. So if you can't get the full Togger Gecko in one expeditions for example. A little word on the mercenary set. So the mercenary set was the one that... but what should I say about it? It was the one that was obtained on the free version. It was linked to the account. It wasn't... You wouldn't be able to buy it. So the NPC will not sell it. Is it possible for us to add it later on in the future for people to buy? Right now, I don't know. I can't say. I would have answered the same thing. For now, we consider it to be the prestigious reward of Season 1. And we would like it to keep that kind of prestige. So people who have finished the Season 1 will be able to profit from it and show that badge. We, we don't like to say never on things like that because if we change our minds later on in a few years, we don't like that. But for now, it is not in the plans to be added to the markets for you to buy it. Will you be able to get it on a different server? Nope. You will only be able to pick it on the account that has finished the expeditions and it's linked to that character. Oh, sorry. I wanted to say something. The repetition of the expeditons, the tokens, throughout the event. So for season 1, as you may know, there were like 40 dungeons. So there was 40 possible opportunity to gain expeditons. But now it's 20. So where there was 40, you had to do many dungeons in order to get the tokens. Now one dungeon will move you into the next reward. And on the last 5 ones, there will be 2 dungeons per reward. And in order to get the last one, the pets mount, you'll have to do the entire thing. So on these expeditions, you'll have to re re successfully do all of them. We are nearing the end. We will pick up your uh, questions towards the end. And you've told me that you were ready to talk about things like that towards the end. <laughs> so talking about dates, it is happening very, very soon. So it's next Tuesday. It's like season one. We wanted to, well, to drag it over a few days or maybe even months, over two months possibly, so that you can do it over the length of the thing. So you don't start finish it. So after the maintenance next Tuesday, once the maintenance is finished, the first few dungeons will be activated and there will be one dungeon every Monday and two released every Friday. So you can have a slow start of the week and then on Friday when you're settled you can do two dungeons or three if you've missed Mondays. <laughs> Next week, Tuesday. So the last activations will be uh, many weeks before the end of it, or which is the 25th of June, so that you have plenty of time. So between the activation of the last dungeon and the end of the expeditions, there'll be roughly three weeks so you can have the time to finish them at your own pace. Now, in very well, it's important to specify this. It could, if you're not very careful. There are two uh, end of expeditions, the end, it's, which is the date from which, if you do a dungeon, you gain nothing. They will all be deactivated on the 25th June. But after this um, date, you will still be able to recuperate your uh, expedition tokens and rewards until September. So uh, it will stay in the game, the ability to get your rewards if you fail to pick them up before the 25th of June. So you'll have plenty of time to get them back, after which by September you will no longer be able to get them back. I go. But we had to specify so you know that. So it's good to pick them up immediately so you don't have any bad surprises. I'm seeing questions. If you can, it is possible to solo them. It is possible to do them all eight. And you'll be able to do them whichever number of people you want. There was a, yeah, just like every dungeon in the game, they are all soloable. There was a Zelor that soloed them recently, but we will see. There, there won't be any four horsemen in these expeditions, but we will see. We reached the end. We have the calendar here. This is the calendar, so all the information that we've given you in this presentation will be published 
in a dev blog that will be accessible in a few minutes where we will summarize everything in this life for those that didn't hear us or uh, who have stopped listening to us uh, after 10 minutes. <laughs> so here's the full calendar of the activation, which will be very important. So here are the 20 dungeons that were picked for the activation of the dungeon. And from what I can see here, I hope I didn't say anything silly, but the soft oak is the highest level one. In any case, this is the last activation will be the 7th of June, uh, which will leave you with about less than three weeks. Uh, which will be about two and a half weeks essentially uh, to finish the last two or pretty much everything if you've missed it. As Cool has said it, some are easier than others and we do have a little scale of saying this one will be harder, this one will be easier, but it's entirely up to you. Uh, yeah, It's a rough schedule that we have of the difficulty but it can change of course. <laughs> As it turns out, it could be Sponge Mob that is the hardest one that you find. <laughs> so here we have reached the end of our presentation. If you have any question, let's go. We can answer them right now. So as a first port of call, let's pick up questions on expeditions so that we answer everything and that everything we've said was not too quick. Ah, we knew our subject very, very well. So what is the price of the packs? I have absolutely no idea, but I can answer you guys. <laughs> We've talked about it very openly during the dev blog. If you compare the first one with uh, the current one, there are some rewards. There are less uh, rewards than season one. So in season one, there were uh, haven bags, there were attitudes, so emotes, and emoticons or emotes or whatever you call them, a, an emote pack essentially, which were were given during the event. And for the season two, there will be slightly less rewards. There will be the three sets that we've presented, and that's why the price of the medal that you need for the paid version will be slightly cheaper than version one. If I'm not saying anything silly, we're going from fifteen to twelve or thirteen euros, and then from the other for the other packs I might get this wrong I think the most expensive one will be around 30 euros but I don't know about the the last one but for the medal itself for the paid tier it will be slightly less than the previous version so for the Minotaur Roar, what have you planned for us uh, for the maze to make it Ooh, nothing, nothing, they've planned nothing. I didn't work on the doorman, the NPC, but maybe we should look into maybe sending you straight to the room if you're doing expeditions, but I'm not going to say anything silly right now because I don't have the final and definitive answer. So, uh, Lord Crow, Lord Crow and Minotauror will be able to be skipped, I think. We'll be able to skip all the mazes and stuff. And for the second one, there'll be a... Oh, there'll be another pack at 19 euros and 60 days of sub. And there'll be a pack at 30 euros with the medal, 60 days of uh, sub. He didn't say that earlier, so he's finding out now that the pack is made of uh, 60 days of uh, sub. A GPS mount, big mount or... Uh, and 6,000 are greens. <laughs> These are the price tier lists. And the packs will start when the expedition starts, so uh, presumably um, around Tuesday. Um, or the rewards, uh, can you recuperate them if you're less than level 160? And I'm not sure, it's either 160 or 180. There's a moment where you can't enter and another one where you can't validate the achievement. So I think 180 is what we have fixed ourselves in the interface, in the com and everything. It's starting from level 160 that you'll be able to unlock the achievements and get the rewards. Gecko mode, will it be available? Yeah, 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 it will always be um, available from uh, Toke Gecko in uh, Astrub. The strat that some people have 
Oh, some people have found a loophole. It's a loophole where if they bought the pack repeatedly, they were able to claim the reward multiple times. It's clear our uh, goal never was to um, make this thing available and cheap. We wanted those rewards to be exclusive and expensive. But eventually, at some point in the future, if we keep adding 2, 3, 10 every time, of course, there will be more of them. So, these, are, well, these will be regular achievements that you'll be able to pick. Same with uh, the uh, Haven bag. We have no plan, just like the mercenary set, we have no plans of putting them back in the NPC. We never want to say never, but as far as we know, in this season, they won't be added to the game yet. Is there a version that is planned for Retro and Touch as well. I can't speak for Touch, but there is something possibly coming for Touch. We'll never say never, but we, ha we don't have uh, the answer to that. We haven't um, talked about this in the beginning, but we will not be talking about Retro today. I failed to mention that in the beginning. Yeah, well, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know, but I don't want to have... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say. <coughs> Where is the NPC for buying the rewards? So before it was in the Asher Militia. Now is at the zap, so every time you go to the zap, you'll find them easy. Just like the mercenary NPC before. So the two NPCs will be at the same place in uh, Astro for the sake of ease. And uh, the Tokageko guy will be available all year round. You don't just buy using your rewards during um, um, the event. It will be during the whole year. He's not at the zap right now, but he will be next Tuesday. So, there won't be any high-level dungeons. It will be only the old version dungeons, which will be increased to 129. Have you added any lore in regards to these expeditions? I didn't do it, yes, I didn't do it myself. But, our lore expert has added some, and you'll be able to discuss this with the whole mercenary. Add this up. So, what is the story of these clans that is happening right now? It's unfolding under our eyes. Will the room, the boss rooms before the two rooms, will they be level 200? Yes, even the first room will also be increased to level 200 before you reach the boss in the second room. And there's also, I think, one dungeon that only, a few dungeons that only have one room. Yeah, 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 I'm sure. So for uh, Moolf, straight up, one room. That's it, straight to the boss. Any spoil of one of the bosses first, please? Yes, you need the keys, Aslex. Do you have any other in mind that you can spoil? You're not obliged, but if you want. Uh, you can do a little tour around the moon, but I think he's coming back around later. He'll put a lot of totems, you'll have to put all the totems in the right place. The totems change places, they create dead, dead cells. If you step on those dead cells, it's completely rubbish, shit's gonna hit the fan. I'll let you discover. Holy shit, moon sounds horrible. <laughs> wow. And the gameplay rewards, they'll be the same as uh, the season one. There'll be uh, little consumables like boats, XP, prospection. There'll be some bread, energy. Bread, energy, HP. Uh, will, will Moon crit uh, one shot if he crits? I'm not gonna say anything about that. <laughs> Are there any other events planned around the year? Yes, we have promised that there will be some events around the year and they will be communicated uh, throughout the year. When we have anything new to tell you, they will be released and we will tell you about it. We will share knowledge with you. I'm seeing some questions outside of expeditions right now. I'm ready to pursue them. Just pick whatever question you want. If you have any other questions, just pop them in. Don't hesitate. We're taking all of them. <laughs> it's not for 0.001% of player base. We, when we've looked at the numbers of the first expedition, we've seen that it um, touched a lot of players. And the first one, uh, we've looked at the stats and there's about 60 to 70% of characters that were above level 160. So we've done... We've, we've arrived at this decision by being informed and we've realized that people start to lose uh, breath because there were so many endgame dungeons that required a big investment. This is why we said instead of doing 40, we will slow them down to 20 and go back on something a bit more simplified. So the investment that we're doing uh, was massive, but this, uh, this year 
will be bigger but in a different way and that will create more richness on just a fewer number of uh, dungeons by adding new mechanics on top of the existing ones to make it more interesting for you guys. Will there be specific drops for the bosses, John explain? No, no, no. Everything will be the classic. Uh, anything that you get will be no different from the previous. And the achievements, the regular achievements, will not work on the bosses. So you can't get them during the expedition if you take that special dungeon room. Uh, we've got some questions that happen, not about expeditions, but they keep recurring. I'll start. The legendary items question. Ooh. Legendary items. It's always, it's still in the works, it's still in the plans for this year, and very, very briefly, very rapidly. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> very soon. Ooh. Somebody's asking, are you satisfied with the shadow event? Because they've both presented it, and the guy on here, he was very ready for it. Uh, this guy. He played it himself with his entire team, and he was super excited for it. But we will share more details uh, in a future live. So, the Aka Flip and Sadida complete reworks. I will answer the same way as I've done with the legendary items. It is on the way, it is progressing nicely, and it is coming very soon. I've heard some things that sounded very interesting. And at last, for the Aka Flip and the Sadi, they will both be before Unity 100% for sure. Right, on the Feka and the, the Fogger not. In effect, yeah. They are a bit strong. They are strong. They have plenty of tools to do things after the, the, the update. They have a more interesting toolkit. But again, before the next update, there will be some adjustments on both classes. I prefer not to give you any dates, any fixed dates for the time being. Because you never know. Because um, with the, all the peregrination of life, all things that can change. Yeah, I can't say any anymore. Yeah. They were a bit strong, yeah. Uh, a bit strong was a euphemism, but they need they need some adjustments because they are overrepresented in uh, in PvP. And the goal is not to completely redo all the mechanics, but it's just to make little adjustments like on range and damage base damage things. Do you have any approximative date for that? I don't understand this. Yeah. <laughs> Grobe dungeon for retro. I can't. I don't. I can't talk about this sub subject. It's out of my hands. Stuff is retro. Yes, I saw a question. Maybe it's the same person spamming the same question, but I've seen it so many times. So I will answer it right now. Uh, it's about the Temporis XP potions. Because what happened is, in all transparency, was during the update, we had, on a very small modifications, as we said, the server sometimes is so demanding. When you make a little adjustment here, something big explodes the other side. So we've made a little modification on something that had nothing to do with potions and XP. And there were some XP potions from Temporis that completely lost their substance, so they could no longer g give XP. Yeah, players on their life. So what we will do here is, our commitment is to give you back uh, what you have rightfully earned, but you'll have to contact us so we can make sure. After the, when is the Unity live? I can't tell you, I'm really sorry. So, the badges in Expeditions. So, if you buy a lot of medals or something like that, no, we have fixed, if you really, really like it, and we have some more interesting returns, then we might do more of these things, knowing very well that now, the Season 2, has a system that is slightly similar to the first one, which asks you to go and do dungeons. But since uh, season one, we had already talked about things that could be totally different. So for this one, that wasn't the choice that we've made. We don't oblige ourselves to uh, limit ourselves to have only dungeons as part of expedition, but we could open it to some other ideas, but we're not telling you any more about that right now. Uh, I didn't have the information earlier on uh, the all green prices earlier, that's why I didn't want to answer it. So on the expedition pack that you buy with real cash, uh, I don't have the info yet, but I'm still waiting for the team to send me... Uh, I had planned some notes, but I didn't... Uh, <laughs> 
instead of uh, answering i don't know every time i send a message and try and get the information but as uh last year there was a prize in all greens but very certainly there might be um so if we lose if we lose a fight against uh the boss will we have to redo the entire uh, dungeon yeah yeah it will there will be a normal save so if you're losing the boss fight and there's two rooms then you get teleported back to the second room and restart the fight The feckin' earth, we've talked about it earlier. Some people are asking them questions. They're... Why don't you separate PvP and PvM spells? Because it's not our will right now. It's not something that we're interested in doing right now. So... Let, let me start again so uh, things don't get misinterpreted i did say no i don't like to say no to some questions because we always have surprises that can happen but for the time being it has never been brought up internally will it will it be possible it won't be able to capture expedition bosses that's categorical so you can't save them for later You will have access to the entire dungeons as part of the expeditions without having the paid medal. The only th difference is there will be supplementary or extra cosmetics if you buy that medals, but you still have access to the entire event, all dungeons, everything. Uh, Dungeon Rushers, we have a question. There was one that was uh, released during the um, the Christmas, not the the uh, the Chocolate Island, which was released yesterday, and our objectives, our will is to do that kind of event throughout the entire year for 2024 so you'll have a lot more coming your way this year with one that is coming very very shortly <laughs> so for um the addition of multi-account um th this this question i think is asking about the hero mode that we had mentioned in previous lives about unity and things of that nature it's still in progress it's still in the works right now as it stands we're breaking our heads because um we're trying to progressively make modifications to clean what has already been done in the past and allow ourselves more modularity in order to be able to achieve what we're trying to with this game mode. But for right now, I can't guarantee you anything right now. For now, we haven't been able to go very far to confirm whether technically it is possible or not, or at least from what we have in mind right now, from the data that we already do have. Will there be fixes from quest fights? Um, there were some bugged quest fights, like uh, one Four Horsemen. So we've made some modifications, some corrections on the Four Horsemen. This was done in uh, a few weeks now, two, three weeks. There was a regression that happened because of the glyph that wasn't moving with the mob. So if you know any bugs of that nature, don't hesitate to send them our way and uh, on the forum and we will look into them and do something about it. Question about the um, uh, enhancement and amelioration that you are bringing to the Magin interface. Not not on the Flash client. Well, it requires a lot of work and our teams are focused on Unity. And on Unity, I've seen the interface, the Magin interface has completely evolved in the Unity client. And it took a lot of work, a bit of research, and we will see what it looks like in the future. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> are there any changes that were in that are in the make for um, breeding Ooh, there are some modifications that are in the process in unity as well we've seen it it's it's still a bit too early to give you any sort of meaningful detail i, I thought to specify that but there are lots of discussions that have been made on the subject and some modifications in the horizon for sure redo of the dofus forum Right. Sadly, it's not our team that manages the forum, so I can't really speak for them. <laughs> but it's not impossible that there might be some uh, forum modifications coming very shortly. I can't discount that without telling you anymore. The uh, shadow server stats, have we got any? 
we will talk with cool um, in five ten minutes when we don't have any questions, but we will share some with you. Tanuku Wisan, is he uh, fully debugged now or? Nope, we still have a problem with uh, the boss. The boss that stays invulnerable under certain conditions. We're still working on that one. We have unlocked them for a few days in Shadow. Uh, because if he remains invulnerable in Shadow, it's a bit complicated because you can just die and lose. But on the last few days on Shadow, the dungeon remains problematic. So beware. Be careful, that's all they're saying. Careful, don't do it. <laughs> oh, questions are popping by very quickly. Some people are asking, will uh, sidekicks be usable for expeditions? Yes. Have we made some uh, mobs that will scale on the level of uh, uh, players? Nope. It's not something that is easy to achieve. It's not a flexible kind of coding. It's not something that automatically can be done. We have to make the mobs at every level tranche. It's really complicated, so no, there won't be any scaling. Uh, will it be interesting to do power leveling on expedition bosses? Mm, remains to be seen. First of all, it won't last. Oh, because you're saying there's only two rooms. Will it be interesting to farm resources and uh, do power leveling? Yeah. Are there any uh, sort of blocks? If there is any, yes, we do have um, uh, hot switches. If there's any problem with any dungeons that gets abused, a mechanic that leads to generation of XP or too many resources, we can just switch it off immediately and stop the abuse. Will you need a key to do the expeditions? Yes. Sadly, you can't have a uh, bunch of keys for this or use your bunch of keys for this, so... The um, set, will it be linked? Yeah, we've answered this one already. Will there be a Temporis in 2024? On retro, yes, there is. <laughs> but I can't tell you. You've already spoiled my talent of 2024. Yeah, yeah, it was already announced, you know. <laughs> it was announced at the Crossman Summer 2024. <laughs> What's the number of mute characters on the map? I have no idea, sorry. Alors, alors. Are there any questions? There will be no emotes as a reward. So the emotes, we're trying to not do many of them while waiting for Unity because it will necessi necessitate uh, a double work from us to redo them, reanimate them, and adapt them to class. And to already do the attitudes and emotes that we've already done is already a big work and we don't want to add any more to that. Will there be any perceptors uh, in the expedition rooms? Nope, there won't be. <laughs> I want you to write this one down to make sure it doesn't happen. <laughs> no, but in theory, no. These are questions that he's writing to double check them later and no. Uh, <laughs> Cross Maga, what is happening with it? Rip. Well, in any case, we are... I can't tell you, as I said earlier, about a Unity Live. I won't be able to tell you exactly when. Oh, look, there's a question for you. Huh? What, 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 what? This is a targeted question, wow. What was it? Sadly, no. It won't be for now. But just like many answers to many questions. Oh, total heal, total damage as stats added to the... Um, do you know the uh, finish screen when you finish a fight? You can see how much every, every character has dealt in damage and heals and stuff like that. Extra stats. Like every, like pretty much most of the questions about the future and Unity, it doesn't have a definitive answer, but it is in the works and it's something that's happening in the background. I missed the, the film, I entirely missed the next bit. Shall we talk about Shadow for a bit? We just, we just answered your question about your... Uh, st End of game stats, but it's coming for Unity. Not a promise, but normally it's happening. What, where are we on the real-time backups? So, on this very big topic, vast topic, we have continued to progress on the topic. However, because we've done a live um, halfway through February with Papino to talk to you about this, the last modifications that were remaining, they were a bit risky and it was going to ask a lot of maintenance that could have been complicated. So we've decided to modify a little bit 
our plan vis-a-vis -vis the last modifications on immediate save and we've modified a bit the way in which we've done them up until now but we will go through a different method which will allow us to do everything all at once the last modifications and and it should be normally the conclusion should be it the conclusion the final solution is being tested right now internally and it should arrive for 2.72 update Ooh. Are there any other um, expected uh, data migrations uh, in the works? No, no, no. Just like uh, instant save, we've started with the cosmetics and inventories, banks, resources and stuff like that. The most interesting one is the one that let us make progress on the cosmetics in Unity. It's like a step and so. So we've had the first... It was today or yesterday? Yes. So we had the first results in the game in Unity. And... And I think it's really cool. This is what allowed us to do this for others, just like uh, immediate saving. And that's why we've uh, changed our approach to data on this very topic. The dev blog is here now. <laughs> Please bring back Wrath at level 100. <laughs> Please. So all the balancing questions we won't be able to answer, sadly. <laughs> all I can tell you is there will be a live with the dev blog. And a beta of three weeks for 272 update of June. There will be modifications happening, whether it is on the Sadi and the Echo Flip. There will also be modifications happening, uh, other than that, on other thing. And on the list, there is an IOP. IOP is on the list as well. Blank stare. <laughs> right. So I think we've covered pretty much everything and we're just turning in circles and I think we will take, uh, share some information.